So in today's video, I'm finally gonna answer that question. A lot of you guys are asking me to do a video on this one, so I'm gonna do it about the 3.0 liter Duramax. The reason why I'm doing this is because the wife and I were thinking about possibly upgrading our minivan to a Suburban because we do have a very large family, and also the fact that it would be really cool to be able to have a Duramax diesel in it. But more importantly, if we travel, we take the camper with us, we have a bigger vehicle so we can fit everybody in there comfortably in all of our baggage and whatnot. But realistically, is it worth the hype? And also later in this video, I'm actually gonna go to the dealership and check one out, take it on a test drive. I don't know, maybe I'll take one home. We'll see what happens. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys that I'm a self-proclaimed Duramax expert, but I've owned these trucks for many years. As a matter of fact, I have several, and I've built these trucks from the ground up. I've installed performance parts on them. I know what works and what doesn't. So I'm gonna give you guys an exclusive take on my very first experience driving a Chevy Silverado with a baby Duramax 3.0 liter in it. Also another line of work that I do, I have a 30 foot gooseneck trailer. I usually hook it up to my 2500 HD Duramax Denali and usually the heaviest thing that I haul is another diesel truck on that trailer. So if I wanted to ditch the heavy duty trucks for my livelihood and stick with a half ton, would it really be worth it? But let's dive right into what this truck can actually bring and how this can benefit you. The 3.0 liter Duramax joins a list of available engines for the 2020 Chevy Silverado GMC Sierra 1500s. This inline six engine offers up to 277 horsepower and 460 foot pounds of torque while earning an EPA rating of 33 miles to the gallon for two wheel drive configurations and 29 MPG for the four wheel drive models. So this engine actively competes with the Ram's 3.0 liter Eco Diesel V6, also Ford's 3.0 liter Power Stroke V6. So while the 3.0 liter Duramax has yet to be proven, it's a technology revelation with a great deal of innovative, unique, and never before seen features. The cast aluminum engine block offers significant weight savings, but utilizes iron cylinder liners for more robust wear protection and reliability. The deep skirt engine block design places the bottom of the engine block well below the center line of the crankshaft and also utilizes a lower crankcase extension attached to the main bearing caps, often referred to as a girdle for added rigidity and strength. The aluminum pistons and forged steel connecting rods transmit power to the forged steel crankshaft, which is secured in place by seven main bearing caps. But as stated before, it's rated up to 277 horsepower at 3,750 RPMs and 460 foot-pounds of torque at 1,500 RPMs. Furthermore, the engine produces 90% peak torque by 1,250 RPMs and maintains peak torque from 1,500 to 3,000 RPMs, giving the engine a relatively broad torque curve. Active thermal management is almost a unique feature for the 3.0 liter Duramax, which also employs a series of three electronic actuated valves in the engine's controlling system to manage the distribution of cooling through the engine block. By targeting specific coolant pathways, engine warm-up times are reduced and an ideal engine operating temperature is maintained under grueling ambient conditions. Also ceramic glow plugs promise quick engine starting and also GM suggests that the engine block heater is only necessary when temperatures drop below negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. The electronical variable intake manifold effectively shortens and also lengthens the intake runners and also optimizes the airflow based on operating conditions. While this technique does not necessarily have a major role in overall power development, it contributes to providing a broad torque curve and general engine responsiveness. Another really cool thing to mention is that this Duramax utilizes is the 10L80 10-speed automatic transmission, which believe it or not was co-developed with the Ford Motor Company. But like the Ford variant, the 10L80 features automatic start-stop technology designed to shut down the engine once the vehicle is brought to a complete stop and promptly restarts the engine when the truck takes off. But that's really the biggest key right here. It's an inline six. It's got the 10 speed transmission. It shifts great. It saves on fuel economy. But how does it stack up to the 5.3 liter half ton Silverado? So now that we've talked about the LM2 3.0 liter Duramax, we're gonna talk really quickly about the LZO. It just came out, but a lot of people are pretty excited about this new upgrade because instead of it being 277 horsepower, it's now rated at 305 horsepower and 495 foot pounds of torque a 10% increase in power and also 7.6% increase in torque compared to the 277 horsepower that we just talked about. And of course, it still offers that awesome 10 speed transmission, but only time will tell. As a matter of fact, if you just purchased one, definitely let me know in the comments what you think about it, good, bad, or indifferent, I'd love to read it. Let's just say that you're interested, you're in the market, and you can't decide whether or not you wanna get this Duramax half ton truck, or just keep it simple and just get the half ton with the gasoline engine in it. Here's a few things we need to consider. But check this out, to the left of the column, column here, 277 horsepower for the Duramax, and to the right, 
355 horsepower, so noticeably a lot more power in the gasoline 5.3 liter option. Now the torque is significantly higher in the Duramax application versus the 5.3 liter gas, coming in at the 383 foot-pounds of torque, and of course no spark plugs needed for the diesel, and yes for the spark plugs on the gas. So this is pretty interesting. The max towing capacity is at 9,300 pounds on the diesel option versus the gas, which is significantly higher when towing. But it's a no-brainer that if you were to go up to the diesel option, you're gonna get better fuel economy versus your 17 to 23 miles to the gallon in the 5.3 liter. But if you were to outweigh the cost, for example, here in Michigan, it's close to 560 a gallon for diesel and gasoline I believe right now is at 330 a gallon where I'm at. Not to mention if you own one of these diesel trucks you have to make sure that you top off the diesel exhaust fluid in the tank as well which sucks. So fuel costs are higher you will have to spend a greater amount of money paying for that diesel exhaust fluid which by the way is on a shortage so there's no telling how expensive that's going to go up in the future. And here's the biggest shocker to a lot of you guys that are new to the diesel game. Repairing a diesel engine when something happens is way more expensive than repairing a gasoline engine. So you got to outweigh the cost. Do you want better fuel economy or do you want to eat it when it comes to gasoline? I think overall if you have zero issues, let's just say you have 200,000 miles on this 3 point liter Duramax, you have no problems whatsoever. I still say that it's going to even out as far as MPGs and gasoline when it comes to more maintenance extra money in diesel fuel and diesel exhaust fluid, as well as changing those fuel filters. But it's a fact that the 5.3 liter V8 gas engine has more towing capacity than the 2020 Silverado with the Duramax. That's pretty interesting. I actually found a used 2020 Silverado that I'm gonna be looking at. I'm gonna go ahead and test drive one for the first time. I'm actually gonna have my wife drive it as well, and we're gonna get our first reaction. All right guys, so my very first time doing a review on the 3.0 liter Duramax, and I gotta say, it is super quiet. But look how tiny that little engine is. If I ever had to replace a turbo on one of these trucks, I'd say it'd be night and day versus one of my other Duramaxes. That's pretty awesome, it's right there. One thing I really enjoy is the fact that the def is right here. And that's kind of cool, you don't have a cap. That's pretty sweet. It's a pretty nice truck, a little bit smaller though. What do you think, Melanie? Yeah, I don't like the look of it. You don't like the front end? No, I don't like the mirrors. It's too dinky. It's tiny. It feels smaller. The door, the back doors are smaller. Yeah, the back doors. Are, look how tiny everything is. It just, they kind of make it look like foreign. Like a... Like a Toyota Tundra? Yeah. I don't like that. Why are they doing that? I'm with you. Guys, let me know in the comments what you think. Seriously, if you own one of these trucks, not bashing it, I think that they're, I think they're pretty sweet looking. I don't like these style mirrors. I agree with the mirrors. The mirrors are ugly. I don't want to beat on the truck. It's not mine, but... Just get on it a little bit just to see how it accelerates. So let's do this. She's peppy. <laughs> the Nolly would spank this truck. Oh yeah. So she moves. Um, I gotta say, I feel like I'm driving a gas truck, honestly. I mean, you hear the diesel clatter a little bit. But for the most part, I just feel like I'm driving a normal V8 pickup truck. But you're gonna get that 30, some people claim 32 miles to the gallon on the highway in these things. That's pretty awesome. I would say that was, that'd be one of the biggest upsides to owning one of these baby Duramaxes. You still get the horsepower, you still get the torque, you can haul the trailer. But see, the only thing that sucks about that is you still gotta put def in your freaking def tank and you gotta worry about all the emissions garbage on these trucks. I'm just being real here. I mean, really, what is the point in owning one of these trucks? I'd say if you just have a small camper or maybe a trailer under 5,500 pounds, that should be pretty doable. But you start pushing, you know, a load of, you know, 12,000 plus pounds on the back of your truck, you'd have to get a bigger Duramax. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get on the highway. That's all the way to the floor. I'm not too impressed. I mean, it's, I mean, it's 277 horsepower. It's really not that, you know, it's not like it's 400 horsepower, but a lot of guys that own these vehicles were telling me how happy they are. Now, off the get, yeah, they're pretty quick, but at the top end, there, there's nothing. Like this, that's that's full. That's all the way down. It's not slow, though. I'm not trying to review a race truck now. I'm just saying. This truck probably has a load of potential, though, if you put a bunch of aftermarket parts on it. I'm going to shut up right now. I'm going to stop talking. Get it. Yeah, it's all the way to the floor. <laughs> it's, it, I'm not saying it's gutless, it's pretty quick, but. Well, for a truck, you know. 
Yeah, I, I was kind of, honestly, I was expecting it to be kind of fast, even though it didn't have much horsepower, but it did have quite a bit of torque for what it is. I was kind of hoping that it would get harder, but that's kind of wimpy. It's not bad. I don't like the, I mean, I feel like I'm closed in, though. It just seems so, the windshield doesn't seem very big, you know? Yeah. Well, it's a half ton. It's a smaller truck. Right. With your Denali, I just like the openness feeling of it, the space. You probably could get away with hauling something pretty heavy with these trucks, but you're really pushing it. You're really stretching it, you know? So for my lifestyle, for what I do for a living, you know, pulling a gooseneck trailer, I don't think that this would be very practical for me. But yeah, that'd be the biggest thing. But we can't fit our whole family in this thing. No. But paying for the diesel right now wouldn't be great either. Yeah, but... <laughs> This truck's got gets 30 to 32 miles to the gallon. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. As far as you trying to do something real and haul some heavy equipment, this thing wouldn't cut it. I honestly, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'd just get a gasser. I just I'd get a V8, you know. Oh, look huge. <laughs> this van actually has about the same horsepower. Flat foot. Oh yeah, buddy. I don't know, man. I think I think she'll spank the the three point oh liter Duramax. <laughs> Okay, so now that I'm back, I'm gonna give you guys my overall opinion on this one, but let's talk really quickly about the pros and cons of this engine. But some of the guys that are actually driving this every single day and using them as a workhorse, how are they performing out there in the wild? That's what I wanna know. So if you wanted to use this thing for work, you're probably gonna wanna get a Ford or a Dodge because in terms of payload and towing capabilities, believe it or not, GM actually does fall short in this category. It definitely falls short of the 11,400 pound rating from the Ford and the new 12,560 pound rating of the Ram. However, given the Duramax tabletop torque curve from the 1500 to 3000 RPM, you are never gonna see the GM lose the race to the top of the hill. But let's talk about the cons really quick. What are the biggest complaints? By far the biggest gripe with the new 3.0 liter Duramax is definitely gonna be the serviceability of the belt that drives the engine's variable flow oil pump. The oil pump's belt carries a 150,000 mile replacement interval. And given its location, the transmission has to be pulled in order for you to access the belt. Along with that transfer case, if your truck is a four wheel drive, this is interesting given the fact that both of the high pressure fuel pumps and camshaft are chain driven. The engine's obviously a lot smaller, there's a lot more room to work on it. I know I noted that, but the fact that that belt right there, you have to remove all that stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm hearing that you have to pull the cab in order to service that belt. And like I said, 150,000 miles is nothing. You're gonna blow through that quickly. You're gonna have to replace that stupid belt. And just think about the extra money and time that you have to do that. Now, my overall opinion on this one, if I wanted a diesel and I wanted to pull a big camper and I wanted to fit my whole family in, let's just say a Tahoe or a Suburban, I really wish GM would have stepped it up and just did a three quarter ton option. Bigger frame, bigger leaf springs, bigger rear end and you have the mighty Duramax engine in it. I would say that this vehicle would not fit my personal lifestyle. It may for you guys, but in my case, it won't fit the bill. One thing that my wife noted when she drove the truck as well is the fact that the older 2018 Silverado was actually nicer than the 2020 Silverados. She felt that this truck was actually a lot more comfortable than the newer pickup trucks. Also another thing when I was looking at this, I posted this on my Instagram before I posted this video to ask some of the guys in the comments what they think about the 3.0 liter Duramax and some of the guys that actually own them and what they think and what their experience is. A lot of positive stuff and a lot of negative stuff. There's also some comments left from mechanics that work at GM dealerships talking about how much of a nightmare they are to work on, as well as some of the consumers out there that own these vehicles saying that they have gone back and forth to the dealership with numerous problems. Now, it may be the luck of the draw. I'm hearing a lot of other people with their personal experiences saying that they absolutely love the MPGs. They really enjoy the trucks. As a matter of fact, some people are saying how excited they are to get rid of their older 3.0 liter and step it up to the 2022 version. But here's my overall take on this one. If you guys wanted a very nice, stylish, a daily driver that could save you guys a lot of money on fuel, I would probably go with this. But in my case, if I'm gonna purchase this truck, I'm gonna wanna use it for work. But I'd probably still get the 5.3 liter option just because it's gonna be a lot cheaper to maintain. But like I said, I'm not bashing the baby Duramax. I think it has its place. But when I'm purchasing a truck, I'm gonna do my best not to buy into the hype. Now guys, do me a huge favor. Let me know in the comments exactly what you think about this Duramax engine, especially for some of you guys that own them. Drive them every single day, pull trailers with them, or just simply drive them to work and drop the kids off at school. Also for some of you guys that own those smaller diesels in the Ford and the Dodge pickup truck, I want to hear your thoughts on this. 
comment below, load them up. If you guys found some value in this video and you want to subscribe, definitely hit that and hit that like button. It's going to overall share this information to the entire platform and I really appreciate it. But I really appreciate you guys watching till the very end of this video. You guys are absolutely awesome. You're killing it. I appreciate your time as always. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned.